Hey folks, have an update on the Ultima 4 on the eBadger 6502 project. To make progress, I've broken the project down into four phases. I thought about rebuilding the VGA from scratch, but decided it makes more sense to improve on the existing design. The existing design is working very well, and there's plenty more to do, so improve the existing design it is. To do this, I'll use the schematic and rebuild the design on the breadboards. I'll adjust the schematic as necessary as I go. In phase two, I'll build the sound circuits. I have 10 AY3 2910 chips on the way, and I picked up some additional 6522 vias. As I prototype the sound circuits, I'll update the schematic as I go. I'll write and report software to test the circuits and verify that they behave the way the mocking board does on the Apple II. I'll add two sound chips to support six voices. In phase three, I'll update the computer to make the Apple II software porting easier and improve the capabilities of the machine. I'll better emulate the Apple II soft switches. I'll expand the device address space to 4K. I'll prototype and fix the SD card design, adding proper level shifting and validated on a breadboard. I'll add support for ROM and RAM banking, and I'll produce a new PCB. When it arrives, I'll populate and test the changes. In phase four, I'll port the Apple II version of Ultima 4 to my machine. I'll update the SD card, DOS routines, and emulate the floppy drives as necessary. I'll use my software emulators I go to bring it up. I'll work on multiple stages at the same time, but these are the key parts of the project. I've started on phase one, take a look. I've rebuilt the part of the VGA circuits that create the horizontal and vertical sync signals. Here I'm plugging the individual RGB wires into various counter chips. The memory reads will happen at each blue to black transition, or twice the speed of this counter. The circuit includes the 25 MHz clock, a 4-bit 74F161 as a clock divider, one 74HC590 8-bit counter for horizontal and two more for vertical, a 39SF040 512K flash ROM, and a 74HC574 latch. The latch is clocked at 5.4, and holds the sync signals, the reset signals, and the display signal. Here I've plugged the green wire into the display signal. I'm making a change to the schematic based on the rebuild. The 74HC590 has two clocks, one for the counters and one for an internal register. On each counter chip I had both clocks wired together. I believe this put the output one count behind the internal clocks. I found that if I wire the register clock to 5.4, the VGA signal goes from 59.6 Hz to 59.9 Hz, so I'm making that change. I'll share the schematics on GitHub soon. x to f layer has perhaps the best concise overview of the Apple II high-res graphics on the internet. It includes some of the history and reason. There are plenty of oddities. For example, for each byte read, 3.5 color changes can be represented. Colors are represented as a bit pattern with a palette bit switching between two separate palettes. The bit pattern for a color in a given palette is reversed in odd numbered memory locations. The video memory is also not contiguous. I created a software emulation of the Apple II graphics in my eBadger 6502 emulator. In preparation for building a circuit, I took a pass on the algorithm and made it as simple as I could. This function takes a Y value for the scan line and P high res points to the video memory. Variables for the palette bit, the previous bit, and the color. The colors array contains the palette information. First dimension for the palette and second for the color with the index being the bit pattern. Count pixel tracks the current screen X position. X represents the byte of video memory for a given scan line. L adder is the address in video memory given the line and the column. Cur is the actual byte of video memory. Palette is the top bit. For each bit in the byte, get the current bit, calculate if we're at an odd memory address, and put the previous bit and the current bit together to create an index into the color palette array. If we're at an odd memory location, reverse the index bits. Get the color from the colors array, plot the pixel on the screen, stash the previous bit, and loop until done. Okay, here's the algorithm running in the emulator. The colors look good. I tried loading up Apple Win and poking memory locations in high res mode, and the algorithm seems consistent. Thinking about the circuit now, here's a simulation I created in Logisim Evolution. I'm thinking that when I read a byte of screen memory, I can get the odd bit off of one of the sync counters. Stash the palette bit in a latch. Curb bit will be the bit shifted out of the shift register, and I'll latch that into the previous bit. Using those bits, I can model the algorithm to light up a specific circuit for each given color. Thanks for listening.